at the end of each show, they got paid in cash. That's how I read the Franklin got there. When you get paid in cash, how can the tax man track your money, nigga? How can the tax man, don't you know that is the root to all evil when you don't let the tax man know how much money you bring in? Girl, they will find you in you, girl. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below. And for a small monthly $5 fee, you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's talk about um i tina my life story with kurt loader so okay. where we left off you got ickety ickety and tina the turner passing through florida okay towards the end of 1970 ike took Tina into a studio to record the version of Proud Mary that they had been perfecting on stage for the past two years. I told y'all, they've been working on Proud Mary long before y'all seen it, okay? Well, if you've seen it in a show, then you knew that it was a big deal, okay? But everybody else didn't know that they was working on this, you know, thing. So when it hit, it hit. It was So it was a radical reworking of the original hit by Credence Clearwater Revival. We made that song our own, says Tina. I love the Credence version, but I liked ours better. Released in January 1979, Ike and Tina's Proud Mary quickly became their biggest U.S. hit. By mid-March, it had reached number four on the pop charts, the highest charting record they would ever have. Also, just one more thing. This was the song that gave Tina her first Grammy. Okay, so she ain't new to this. Okay, she is absolutely true to this. So, according to Tina DeTurner, Ike is rolling in the dough. Okay, they in the money. Okay, and Ike loves to show off. So, what he decided to do was to buy himself a studio that was not inside of the, what's the name of the song? The Olympia House. It was near the Olympia House, you know, because you don't want to, you know, cook and shit in the same place, okay? Some people do, but just not rich people. We're going to take the beginning of this song and we're going to do it really say easy. So he had his own little studio, his own little place of solace over there where he could create and he ain't got to pay nobody nothing, okay? Thank you, Proud Mary. Mm -hmm. Ike, because he rolling in the dough, you know that money make them niggas crazy, okay? It make them think that every girl that they sleep with, sleep with want to rob them, okay? That's one thing that money do. It make them start doing boogity sugary, you know, more than an average person. In fact, you're doing boogity sugary with stars. Some of you tried to tell me that, uh, who was that turned him out? Y'all tried to tell me it was Red Fox and Sammy the Davis that turned Ickety Ikety out on drugs. Now, they don't say that in this book. Okay, it don't say that in the book, but we have come to the consensus that Tina Turner is lying or, you know, let's say, uh, not evasing or, you know, like conveniently leaving out 
facts. So anyway, like I was saying, I get going crazy, okay? On top of uh, using Booker Sugar, being scared of random bitches that you don't know because you're scared they're going to rob you, you start carrying kiss th- pistols all the time on you too, you know? They said that Ickety Ickety had a pistol everywhere in that studio. He was ready for action, okay? Like, for real, if it was going to be a war on American soul, the fr- soil, the first place they're going to go is to I. Turner's studio. Because now, along with being freed from constraints of time and money, I felt freed as well from the need for rest, for sleep, and now he is free to do as much boogity sugar sugar D as he wants to do. And Kane chimes in and says, Larry Williams was a millionaire and he was a drug dealer. He kept his own yacht moored at Marina Del Rey, which was where I knew him from because I used to live down there and he dealt the drugs off the boat. Let's talk about the drugs. They not talk about the drugs. The only time you get, the only time they really talk about drugs is when it comes down to everybody else but Tina. You're not going to tell me that it's powdered donuts everywhere and Tina Turner not going to pick one up. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, no, because I ain't never put nothing up. But still, it's just the point, girl. It's like she's delusional. Like you down there, you you played down the fact that your doctor gave you 50 volumes, okay? The doctor said that you needed tranquilizers, okay? And you also dial down these things called benzies, beanies, or something like that. Girl, Ike is not the only drug user. Larry was a nice guy, but he was always with the drug set, always willing and dealing the cocaine. Larry knew Ike, and he told me that the one thing he most regretted was that he had been the one that turned Ickety Ickety onto drugs. He said Ike was a really nice man until he introduced him to coke, okay? I'm saying, why? And then one of y'all told me that uh, down in the comments that Miss Roby said that he's a nice guy, okay? And Tina said that Ike was a very giving man, and Miss Roby or Roby, whatever, she co signed it and said that Ike was a nice guy too. She said she never witnessed him, you know, whopper powing Tina, but she knew of it. Like she saw the after effect of it. And I'm like, well, she, Miss Robbie, are you sure that uh, 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 Tina wasn't having a lover's quarrel with uh, Ann? I mean, that could have been it too, you know. Some years later in January, 1980, Williams was found dead so my got him. Okay. So he go with Christ now, you know, the, the dirty dick mother auntie partner of Ickety Ickety, okay? He telling his story, okay? One night in Vegas, Christ now said, we were sitting around and got started talking about Boogada Sugada, okay? He didn't care about it, talking about Ike. I wasn't interested into the book and the sugar, though, okay? Now, Krasnow, with his devious ass, he said that around this time, Ike is about 40 or so, okay? And I said to Ike, says Krasnow, one thing that's great about Coke is that you can stay hard. You can screw for years behind that stuff. Lies. Lies. Ain't you never heard of the book of sugar dick? Ain't you never heard of that? Ooh, that book of sugar dick is something terrible. Okay. You could just have high blood pressure and that thing don't work. So that's a lie. You trying to tell me that booger sugar dick lasts longer? Answer no. That shit lasts. It don't last. It don't work. The Rolling Stones feature was the first public suggestion of what Tina's life with Ike was really like. According to one association, they quoted in the story, Ike would storm into the office with a troop of people, six foot chicks, a bag of boogity sugary, Really, really crazy. He'd carry around 25000 in cash in his pockets with a gun. He'd drive around town, man, sometimes to watch, sometimes the Laurel Canyon in his new Rolls Royce and pick up the boogity sugary. Now, this is crazy now, you know, and I'm like, okay, so the rich dude, Larry Williams, think that he introduced Ickety Ickety to the drugs. Okay, Krasnow feel like his prodding 
was part of the reason as to ickety ickety getting on drugs. But um, I mean, as strong as his mind is with them bitches, wouldn't you think it'd be strongest with the niggas? Unless he a pump. was deeply steamed about the Rolling Stones story, but his anger was tempered by the Turner's burgeoning success. 1971 was turning out to be a bonanza for the Turners. Ooh. By July, another live review album what You See Is What You Get was perched at number 25 on the chart. The Turners were now turning up in the films too, okay? They say specifically this movie called Soul to Soul. Do y'all remember that? By this point in the review's evolution, a certain sartorial outrageousness had set in, with Ike disporting himself into enormous mink coats and handbags and skin tight hot pants worn over black pantyhose. There's definitely concerns in this book about money, okay? Because what they're saying to me is that at the end of each show, they got paid in cash. That's how Aretha Franklin got fucked up. When you get paid in cash, how can the tax man track your money, nigga? How can the tax man, don't you know that is the root to all evil when you don't let the tax man know how much money you bringing in? Girl, they will find you and kill you, girl. They like dope dealers. they said was ickety ickety was the man when it came down to the booger sugar you know how you got a friend that always got the weed you be like yes make sure shirley come through because shirley always got that good green okay ickety ickety was that person okay make sure you call ike because ike always brings a good booger sugar okay ike didn't make his people pay Okay, what Ike used to do was just come through the door, hey, hey, you want a honey bun? Here's a honey bun. Okay, you want a powdered donut? Here's a powdered donut. You need some booger sugar? Uh, here you go. You know, and that's the quickest way to go broke. And feeding all your junkie friends drugs. I always really wish that Ike could get what he wanted, a string of hit records, because when he did, I was going to leave him. I didn't know how, but I knew by then that one day, some way, I would. So when he built that studio, I thought, wonderful. I'll be rid of his ass real soon. Yes, that's what us ladies do. We find shit for you to do so that you can leave us the cologne. Ain't that right, sweet baby? She paid me no mind, y'all. Now, the thing about his studio that was down the way, okay, was that uh, poor Tina, I ain't gonna say poor Tina because I'm tired of like, nah, Tina's not a victim in this book at all. She's not, I mean, even though she wants to portray herself as one in this book, this hussy is not a victim at all. So, any rate, um, you know, poor Tina, whenever he down at the studio, if he get in the mood, he be like, Tina, get your ass down here and sing it the way I want you to sing it and if she didn't it'd be repercussions and i'm saying to myself why would you bust her nose and bloody her mouth because that's going to impede on her singer i mean why would you put your hand on a woman anyway okay but that would impede on her singing he didn't care if she didn't sing that song right pow to the moon baby now this is where some of ickety ickety's and tina turner's children chimed in okay Ronnie Turner said that I was the youngest son, so mother and I were pretty close. I'd always comb her hair in her room and we'd talk. I knew how unhappy she was. My father was just so unpredictable. Craig, Craig Turner said sometimes he would just be out of his mind. 
I can believe that. Now that that might be true in a movie, okay? And a uh, pot of donuts will make you out of your mind, but he said, you know, my father would just come up to me and just wop pow me and be like, get your ass out of my face. Now, by this time, Ann Thomas is back on the scene. Mm -hmm. That is Ickity Ickity's and Tina Turner's lover, okay? Remember, Tina Turner and Ann Thomas was pregnant at the same time. Tina said, I'm not about to get this nigga no more babies. You can give him a baby. She did, and the little girl's name was Mia, okay? So if you see pictures of Tina Turner combing a little girl hair, Mia, that's Ann Thomas's, her lover's, that she shared with Ickity Ickity's baby. So by now, the Turner's glory days of chart Sodom were coming to an end. Tina says, by this time, we were playing places like the Fillmore in San Francisco. And Ike was starting to meet these white hippie girls. They'd be turning him on to cults and things like that and telling him he was a god. Danger, danger. Ike would be walking around saying things like, Caesar did cocaine. And I'd be thinking, but Caesar's dead, Ike. So you mean to tell me Ickity Ickity was wearing that fucked up ass Caesar wig because he really in his mind thought that he was friggin' Caesar? It had been more than 20 years since Ike had made his first record. And as Tina says, he never changed his show and he never changed his style. By fall, Ike and Tina Turner did have another hit, Nutbush City Limits. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe. Make sure y'all like, because that matters too, okay? Now, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. You have a good one.